Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be concentrating the sulfuric acid drain cleaner and cleaning it up so that it's about uh, 98%. Um, and we're going to be doing this by distillation. So you need a distillation apparatus, which I'll get out in a moment, and you can buy those online uh, at eBay for about $30, pretty cheap. And um, you could use a heating mantle, but uh, I don't want to spend all the money to get one because they're rather expensive. And uh, oil baths, sulfuric acid just boils too high, and the oil bath will actually start vaporizing by the point that we reach the boiling point of sulfuric acid. So we have to use something else. So I have some nice clean sand here. Uh, I just put it through a fine uh, sieve here so we could get rid of any of the larger particles. And uh, this is what we're going to use. So basically I'll be putting this into a smaller bowl. But uh, we're going to have a uh, sand, uh, I guess, uh, we'll be using sand essentially as our heating bath. We'll uh, put it in a small bowl, put it on a gas stove so we can get the sand really hot, and uh, put a round bottom flask in there. And this nice fine sand should uh, be able to uh, make it so that it heats the flask fairly evenly, um, so that it doesn't crack or anything, and should also get hot enough so that we can actually distill the sulfuric acid. And at that point, the sulfuric acid will start boiling over, and we can collect it, and it should be nice and pure. Of course, water is going to come over first. And, uh, so yeah, that's basically the principle behind this, and hopefully it works. Now, um, basically, yeah, so I'll go outside and start setting this up, and, uh, meet you then. Before I took this outside, I just wanted to show you the quick dilemma I had. So we set up our sand bath and everything, and, uh, I just fastened it with wires in case there's bumping so it doesn't start jittering out of our sand bath, and it's held in place quite firmly. And, uh, I've attached the rest of the condenser. Now, up here, I actually didn't have, like, we can't use a thermometer. The plastic that holds the thermometer in will actually melt, and uh, the thermometer does not go hot enough. Um, because we're going to be distilling sulfuric acid, which boils over 300 degrees Celsius. So we uh, definitely have to use, uh, be careful with what sort of uh, materials we use. So, instead of using that, we needed something to seal this. So I took this rather large test tube, and um, this one has been broken, so uh, I don't care too much if it totally gets obliterated. But um, it fits quite snugly over this. And if I blow into it, um, barely any air escapes if I plug both ends and blow. Um, so I do believe that by sealing sulfuric acid around here, similar to the rest of the joints, it'll create an uh, airtight enough seal that uh, nothing should happen up there. So that's what I solved with there. Of course, if you actually have a proper stopper or something to uh, block that off, you can. And then I just set up the rest of the uh, distillation apparatus, so we are now ready to take it outside, put this on the uh, camping stove, turn on the heat, heat this really, really hot, and uh, begin. Now, no condensing will be used, because um, if we were to use a water condenser, it would be about 350 degrees right over here, and like, zero degrees over here, because it's super cold outside right now, it's actually snowing. And... Um, with that temperature difference, it's very easy for the glassware to crack and possibly explode, which would spray sulfuric acid all over us, and it would be hot sulfuric acid, and that would definitely give us nasty burns, and we do have to be careful. Anyhow, it's never recommended to put your glassware this hot, but um, I really do need to do the sulfuric acid dissuasion. I have several uh, projects planned if we can get the pure sulfuric acid. So um, anyhow, also any of the cat clips that you use or cat clips that you use up here, make sure they're metal. Because um, they will be, uh, well, these plastic ones here will just be uh, melted right off with the high temperatures. They do need to be metal. Anyhow, all the joints, I'm going to go ahead, fill, uh, grease them with sulfuric acid. Grease the top part up here with sulfuric acid. Fill our round bottom flask down here to about 250 milliliters of sulfuric acid. And, um, of course, set up our receiving flask over on this end. And uh, I'll meet you outside when the heat's been turned on and we've started doing stuff. Okay, so it's been outside for almost an hour now. It's been be really strongly heated, as you can see. And that flame is really hot. And uh, the flask has just begun to boil, and it's boiling nicely. I added some sand into our boiling flask so that um, not as much bumping occurs, so that it's a nice and even boil. And we're starting to actually condense stuff. Over in our receiving flask over here, we're actually starting to get a couple drops of liquid coming over. Now, the first 25 milliliters or so is actually going to be... Um, simple water because our sulfuric acid is about 90% concentration. After 25 milliliters or so, we'll bring another 5 milliliters so, or so over, then switch out the receiving flask and start collecting our nice pure sulfuric acid. And uh, the temperature here is well over 300 degrees Celsius, despite this only being a 100 
degrees Celsius thermometer. Um, the sand bath here, I've watched it go around three times so far, so I'm assuming it's somewhere over 300 degrees Celsius. That's the sand bath. Of course, our flask is not that hot yet because we're not distilling sulfuric acid. Anyhow, so we'll continue to let this all distill. And as you can see out here, we're actually getting a nice little blanket of snow forming over here. Uh, anyhow, so that's kind of cool. Um, anyhow, so I'll meet you back as soon as we start collecting our sulfuric acid. Okay, so I've started collecting the concentrated sulfuric acid, and that 30 milliliters or so was just transferred to this jar. And it's still strongly acidic, but um, it's not strong enough to be considered concentrated sulfuric acid. What I first did was the tissue test, which is where you take um, some Kleenex or something and just drop a drop on after you co constantly change out the uh, receiving flask. And um, if the drop burns through the tissue, then you know it's a fairly high concentration of sulfuric acid. And um, I like to use uh, Nerdrage's method where you view the um, uh, liquid and when you stop noticing swirls in it, then that's when you start collecting your highly concentrated stuff. Because the swirls is just a density difference, which means you have different concentrations. When that stops, it means that it's reached the highest concentration, so it's at about 98%. So I did that, transferred everything that came over below that to over to there, and then we're collecting our concentrated stuff now. And uh, over here, it's very hot. We have vigorous boiling going on in the flask, as you can see. And uh, yeah, I've just... Um, seems that everything's holding up, but uh, there's a lot of bumping occurring right now. So the whole apparatus is shaking. I don't know if you can hear those little jolts every now and then. Um, I don't know. I can hear them. They're pretty loud. You're going to notice a lot of bumping. We've also uh, broken the thermometer. It got too hot. It, it went around several times up to 300 degrees as I said and uh, yeah it's broken anyhow so uh, I'll finish up with the distillation and show you what we got okay so after a very very long distillation we finally collected everything on the other side however the bumping became very vigorous and stuff actually started splashing all the way over our condenser which really sucks so um, we have a bit of contamination so it looks slightly yellow in this and in this opaque bottle it makes it look more yellow but it's not too bad it's slightly contaminated slightly yellow because we had stuff that started boiling over. And I wasn't monitoring the reaction all too carefully, or the distillation all too carefully. This happened when I wasn't looking. Anyhow, also it's been snowing a lot, and we have about 10 centimeters of snow now. So, uh, that's kind of nice. But, um, anyhow, yeah, that's big cloud to distill sulfuric acid. If you were doing this, though, I would highly recommend that you do this much more carefully, um, and watch it very carefully to make sure that nothing splashes over. Um, but with sulfuric acid distillation, the temperatures needed so, um, are so high that it's quite, yeah, uh, like, almost impossible to avoid bumping because, um, that superheated water which is in the sulfuric acid suddenly vaporizes and jumps out of solution, you get this huge jolt and then stuff splashes everywhere. But, um, anyhow, I'm very happy with this. This is about 98% pure and, uh, we'll use it in several other applications and the slight discoloration of it with a couple of impurities shouldn't really affect too many reactions. Of course, you could redistill this again if you wanted um, to obtain nice clear acid. Um, I don't need to do that. I'm happy with what I have. Anyhow, so that's basically how to distill highly concentrated sulfuric acid from drain cleaner. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.